Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. I did not get to make a formal video recapping day three. Uh, and I wanted to recap day three and kind of give my extra thoughts on the Aaron Robinson pick. I uploaded an Aaron Robinson rant video and people kind of got that confused with me thinking that Aaron Robinson is a bad player and, you know, won't be a good player for us. It's not that I thought that. I was just dead set on getting the Giants, Ben Cleveland, or one of these interior offensive linemen because I feel like that's a big need. I don't really have the faith in Shane Lemieux to play right guard, but it seems like the Giants do, or it seems like the Giants have a plan to pick up Trey Turner or to pick up another free agent. Uh, either way, they seem like they're able to address this offensive line, either with what they already have or through your free agent. So, you know, if, if you're not going to address the offensive line, then Aaron Robinson is a solid pick. He is someone that can play inside and out. Um, for all the people that, that said I didn't, I mean, I've uploaded over 20 to 30 film breakdowns. I'm pretty familiar with this draft class. Uh, I did have people ranked over him like Melifonwu, but I don't think Melifonwu has the inside outside versatility that Aaron Robinson has. He competes, he's physical, um, good player to have. Even if he doesn't take Darnay Holmes' job, we will play a, a fair amount of dime coverage, and it's, it's just going to make our, our entire defense better. Solid pick, but I still stand by I would have rather gotten an offensive guard, but we didn't, and the Giants seem to be going a different direction. Moving on to day three, uh, I wanted to go over some of these picks for day three. My favorite pick from day three by far is Ellerson Smith. He is someone that has been on my radar for a little while now as a mid to late round pass rusher. He's like labeled as a developmental pass rusher, but he's got moves right now. He's got athleticism right now to be a rotational pass rushing threat. He is about 252, 252. I have his, I have his stuff right here. Uh, one, I don't really put too much faith in, in all of the analytics because there, there's a ton of ways you can bend numbers, but RAS athletic scores, uh, real relative athletic scores, I usually like what they do. They usually are a good correlator for how someone is going to do in the NFL, uh, at least for some of the positions like defensive end, cornerback, wide receiver, stuff like that. Uh, running back, quarterback, kind of, you know, you never know. But anyway, 6'7", uh, Ellison Smith is. He is... Which is funny because I, I made the argument against Rousseau because he was 6'7", but he didn't have bend. Well, Ellison Smith has bend. Uh, 6'7", 252, uh, didn't do that well on the bench. He has to add some strength. Definitely, you you think he'll add some things. But this is where it really comes into fruition. 41 and a half inch vertical from a 6'7", 250-something pound man. 41 and a half vertical. That is the highest vertical for a defensive lineman ever, period. That's called explosion. That's called ball get off. His broad jump was also over 10 feet. So Ellerson Smith is a very explosive athlete at six foot seven. And to get that in the fourth round is really hard to pass on. Even though we took Aziz Ojolari, we can use a lot more depth, a lot more pass rushers. And Ellison Smith has superstar potential the way, you know, just because of the athlete he is. So I was very excited to see. He didn't run a fast 40 time, but I don't care about that for, for pass rushers. It's all about the explosion. And 41 and a half inch vertical definitely shows that he's explosive. He did not play against all of the elite competition, sure. But he is someone who, who showed up on tape. He showed up on tape. He made plays on tape. Um... And I just love his bend at, at six foot seven. He can really get to the quarterback. And I think he'll be a part of the rotation day one. Um, I just I just really think he, he's a good football player that we got in the fourth round that maybe first round, he's probably going to be taking uh, O'Shane Zemini's spot. I call him Zemini Crickets because he doesn't really do much when he's out there. But uh, I can definitely see him taking O'Shane Zimenez's spot. The next pick after Ellison Smith ended up being, I think, Rodarius Williams because we didn't have a fifth round pick. So, yeah, we ended up having three day three picks. 
The next pick was Rodarius Williams. That's someone else I've seen. And I like this high as a third or fourth round pick. So to get him, uh, along with getting uh, Aaron Robinson early on in this draft, it shows that guys like Sam Bill, I mean, Sam Bill's probably going to get a chance in camp. Uh, and Rodarius Williams probably has a tiny chance of maybe getting cut, you know, if he loses out that competition. But I think at this point, we have all of our cornerbacks. Uh, we, we've got we've got uh, James Bradbury. We have Adoree Jackson. We have Darnay Holmes, Aaron Robinson, Rodarius Williams. And that's five guys right there. And then you add on Julian Love as your corner safety hybrid. Maybe one of Sam Bill and Isaac Yaldum end up making that roster. But I think at this point, it's pretty much an uphill battle for those two. Isaac Yaldum, people try to say he was so horrible last year. Our defense was pretty good last year with Isaac Yaldum there. So for him to be our fifth or sixth corner, if he makes it, is going to be amazing. But Rodarius Williams, I think, could have come you know, to a certain team and started this year. So to get him in the sixth round, amazing. Uh, 5'11", 180, 190-something. Uh, he ran a 4'5", 40-yard dash. But again, on tape, I don't see a slow guy at all. He covers a lot of ground really fast. And again, he's another physical guy. He's more of an outside corner than Aaron Robinson. Aaron Robinson's played outside and inside. Uh, but Aaron Robinson probably has a, a, a way higher ceiling. But Rodarius Williams is someone that I definitely like. And then our last pick of the day, I would have loved for it to be Elijah Mitchell. I wasn't sitting in front of the draft during the sixth round, since during the end of the sixth round at least. Um, I wasn't sitting there. So I didn't see, I can't remember. I know Elijah Mitchell got drafted. But I can't remember if he went off the board before or after Gary Brightwell. Elijah Mitchell was my number one guy. He's that receiver hybrid, but he's also a pretty powerful runner when you give him the ball. And he has that connection to Rob Sell from Louisiana. So we didn't end up getting Elijah Mitchell, but we did get a Gary Brightwell who's a one-cut bat, a, a physical back, uh, runs really hard. I think he's he's 218. Uh, he's going to be that, that short yardage that guy that you give the ball to to wear the defense down. He's going to run very hard. Uh, he ran a 4.6240. I wouldn't say he's that slow. I wouldn't say he's that slow uh, when you see it on the field. He has a couple of times. A couple of times he's going to break off. A, you know, I would say he's a guy that's going to break off 20-something, 30-yard runs. He will get chased down from behind, but I wouldn't say he's a you know ultra slow back. Um, relative athletic score out of 10, he got a 4.62 which is horrible, it's putrid, but again, Ahmad Bradshaw got a three-something, so that is kind of different with, with running backs, the way they, they kind of translate. So Gary Brightwell is someone that I like on tape. He's going to run hard, and he, he fills a spot for us. We got um, we got Saquon, who, who does it all, but he's more of a shifty guy. He's more of a guy that's going to catch some more passes. Devontae Booker can also catch passes, probably blocks better than Saquon, and uh, Devontae Booker also has sort of that big play potential. Uh, he does have that speed. And he's also more decisive of a runner. He's also more powerful of a runner the way he runs. Uh, Saquon can be the most powerful out of all of these guys, but he only does it when he feels like it. And then Gary Brightwell is going to be a guy who's just going to get the ball, get upfield, uh, and just deliver some punishment. So that's a solid stable right here. Of course, we'll probably pick up some undrafted free agents, uh, some free agents as we get into training camp to fill out the spots. But uh, that's a nice three. I feel very confident about that three to where if for some reason Saquon, I don't, I'm not going to wood. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt again. But if he does, we'll have two guys that I feel will be a solid rotation. And Saquon needs to stay healthy this year or the Giants may look at, you know, what they have and just say, maybe we should trade this guy. But uh, that's day three of the draft. Reason I'm only covering day three right now, even though the entire thing is over, is because I will be live streaming today, uh, probably around 5.30 or 6. Look out for that on Twitter. I'll make the announcement also on YouTube. Definitely come in a live stream. I'll try to get some other content creators on there to talk about the draft and to talk about how we feel going into the season. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and... During the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.